Welcome to Mysteries and Mimosas. My name is Meg Sterling, and I'm here with your co-host, Aria Sterling. Hi, everyone. Today's Mystery Monday case comes to us from Detroit, Michigan in 2011. And just a reminder, our Mystery Monday episodes are short episodes with limited information. The Mystery Monday cases are meant to highlight a missing person or a cold case with very little information. The goal is to bring awareness to these cases and make sure the victims are never forgotten. Which brings us to Kalisha Marquita Madden. Kalisha was born on February 4th of 1985, making her 26 years old at the time of her disappearance, which was in November of 2011. That would make Kalisha 38 years old today in 2023. She has a birthday coming up uh, in a couple months. Kalisha Madden was also known as Mocha. She was working as an exotic dancer at the Sting Gentleman's Strip Club located in the 6,000 block of Michigan Avenue in Detroit. Kalisha was last seen on Monday, November 28, 2011, at about 4 o'clock in the morning, entering a black truck with three unidentified black males. One of these males may have been walking with crutches. It is not known whether or not these men were known to Kalisha, and there's no additional identifying information available about these men or the vehicle. Kalisha's mother, uh, her name is Pamela Johnson, remembers Kalisha as a vibrant, happy, loving, and beautiful young lady. Pamela said she was bright, she was funny, she liked to make you laugh. Whenever she came, she was the life of the party. According to NamUs, which is the National Center for Missing and Unidentified Persons System, Kalisha is described as 4 foot 11, weighing between 125 and 135 pounds. Kalisha was last seen wearing a denim jacket, a brown shirt, blue jeans, and knee-high boots. Kalisha has black hair, brown eyes, and she was wearing a long straight wig or a weave. Pictures of Kalisha can be found on our website at mysteriesandmimosas.net and on our Facebook and Instagram page at Mysteries and Mimosas Podcast. Kalisha is a mother of six children who were left to be raised by Pamela and Pamela's parents. In September of 2012, Pamela did an interview with CBS Detroit during which time Pamela said, Word is in the streets is that she's deceased and she is buried in Detroit. Pamela also described Kalisha as a black woman with medium skin tone, 4 foot 11, weighing about 160 pounds. The physical description from Pamela is slightly different, describing Kalisha to weigh about 30 pounds heavier than that described in the NamUs entry. So I don't really know where that disparity came from, um, but there's a, I put a link to a YouTube, basically call to action video from Crime Stoppers where they, they actually do describe her as 160 pounds. Hmm. Okay. It's hard to imagine the pain and suffering Kalisha's family still goes through today over 10 years later. In a 2017 publication on WXYZ News, Pamela talks briefly about her experience. Pamela says, I never, ever, ever in my life thought I'd look at a missing persons poster and my child would be the picture on it. I thought that was pretty powerful because when you take a picture of your child or any of your loved ones, you never expect that picture would someday be on a missing persons poster or in the news asking the public to help give you answers. I mean, if you really think about it, all of us have, you know, take pictures, especially around the holidays. We've taken pictures at Christmas. You know, yearbook photos come out of your kids. And you have those real joyous moments when you're t- capturing those memories. And you never think that it's going to be, you know, a famous picture on the news. Right. On NamUs, you know, on you know, with, with the police asking for help finding that person. Yeah, that's, that's tough. That's a really sad, you know, thing for her entire family, but especially her kids to not have any answers as to where their mom went. I mean, I don't know who saw her get into the vehicle with these three males, whether they were patrons at the club that night. I mean, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of information, but from what you've gathered, it doesn't sound like she would be somebody to just take off and leave either. So unfortunately, it's probably a foul play situation. Yeah, I think it is a foul play situation. And Pamela's, you know, even said that in that news article, she said that, you know, the word on the street is that she's dead and buried somewhere in Detroit. So I think even her family thinks that it's a foul play situation. And you're right. Um, Pamela said that you know, it's not like Kalisha to ever just get up and leave and she would never leave her children behind. In fact, she said Kalisha would never get into a vehicle with strangers, leading Pamela to believe that the three men in the black truck were known to Kalisha. Oh, but there's, interesting. there's nothing out there to suggest that other than mom's intuition, which right. is pretty spot on most of the time. Yeah. In a plea for help, Pamela said, 
My daughter is not the only child missing out of Michigan. There's more than just her. How can you sit back every single day? You can make an anonymous phone call and change someone's life and you won't do it. And Pamela is absolutely right. Kalisha didn't just vanish out of thin air. She's out there somewhere and somebody knows something. The disappearance of Kalisha Madden has been weighing on somebody's conscience for over a decade. And it only takes one phone call to give police the tip that they need to bring answers to Pamela and Kalisha's six children. Yeah, and you can remain anonymous through Crime Stoppers as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just, it's difficult to understand what Pamela and her family are going through. Um, you know, one quote from a news article, she says, I cope. Really, I just deal with it, but not a night I go to bed and I don't think about my child, that I don't pray that she is okay. And I know we've we've talked to guests who have been victims of... Um, you know, homicide survivors and everything. And, and one of the things I remember Missy Smith said is, you know, when, when your child is missing, you don't want to eat because you don't know if they're eating. You don't want to sleep because you don't know if they're sleeping. And this is something that Pamela has been going through for you know, over a decade now. Yeah. Where it's the- devastating. And you figure some of these families, you know, that we do these cases on and we hear about, they go decades without knowing what happened to their family member. So I don't, I don't know how somebody has the strength to keep going through that. That's, that's so difficult. Yeah. And I'm sure everybody finds strength within themselves in different ways. You know, some people, um, they find things to keep them on task. They, they do things in, in their loved one's memories. They continue to, you know, talk about them every single day. And we don't know all the leads that law enforcement has or what they've been doing. Um, you know, quite frankly, we don't know where the information about these three men in the truck came from. Is that a witness statement? I'm guessing it is because if it were video surveillance, I don't see police keeping that, you know, confidential. They they would have released that to the media and there's just nothing out there that, that shows anything like that. Right. They would have at least known for sure what type of vehicle it was, um, how many of them there were, all of those, dis- all those descriptive details that we just don't have. And you mentioned you don't know if these three men were patrons or not. I I would find it hard to believe that they'd be like regular patrons, right? Because somebody would have said something. You would think so. Whoever it was that saw her get in the vehicle with them, you would think that they would have recognized them, possibly. But again, we don't know who it was that saw this or where where they saw it at. I mean, I don't know. Was it right outside of the the nightclub that she was supposedly seen getting in this vehicle? Do you even know that? No. Or, yeah. No, I don't know where in proximity to the nightclub, you know, she got into the car. I mean, there's a lot of different scenarios, right? I mean, one, she could have got in with them willingly because she knew them, like mom thinks. She could have been forced in. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, maybe she was walking to her car and she was forced into the car. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of what ifs about this case and it's such a mystery for so long and there's just not enough information, which is why we like to do these cases. Yeah. Because, you know, obviously our hope is that somebody listening knows something, even if they think it's small, minuscule, doesn't mean anything. If you know anything at all, y- you might be able to help this case. Yeah. I mean, there's at least three people that do Mm -hmm. the three people that were in the truck with her. Exactly. And, you know, maybe one of those people didn't do anything wrong. It only takes one person out of those three to step forward and and say something so that they can have closure for the family. I think it would be very rare for three people to be involved. And those three people have never said anything to anyone else. Right. It it's hard for people to keep their mouths shut. Right. When they're involved in something like this. So chances are that one of those three people said something to someone else. And that person either took that information and thought, oh, that's not real. He's, you know, elaborating on this story he's telling. I don't believe it. You know, who, who knows? Exactly. But, so they, they don't come forward or they're scared to come forward. But, I mean, you can always remain anonymous if you give that tip through Crime Stoppers. Yeah, so if you are one of those people or you know one of those people for this case or any other case, please know that if you know anything at all, you can contact the Detroit Police Department at 313-596-1800 or Crime Stoppers. That number is 1-800-SPEAK-UP. 
or 1-800-773-2587. All right, let's wrap this one up. Let's raise our glasses to Kalisha Madden. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs>